Why do you have the corpus, the body, on the cross? Well, to me, it makes a, a more uh, dramatic statement uh, to the students, a reminder that, indeed, Jesus died and atoned for our sins. So at Christmas time, we often put out a nativity scene, and we've got the baby Jesus in the manger. Well, we know he's no longer in the manger, don't we? But it's a good visual aid, it's a good reminder that God became a man. Yes. And Jesus once was a baby in a manger. Then he went to the cross, rose from the dead, ascended back up into heaven. And because of him, we have the forgiveness of sins, and we have the hope of eternal life. Yes. One question I like to ask the students is, why did Jesus come in the world? But why was it necessary for Jesus to go to the cross? Of course, the cross talks of forgiveness of sins. Why could not an almighty, loving God just offer forgiveness to man based on man's repentance? A man say, I know I've done wrong, I should serve God, from now on I'm going to serve the Almighty and do what I'm supposed to do, do what God intends me to do. Why could not an almighty God just say, you're forgiven? And I believe this is a very profound question that we want to investigate this morning. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8 says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. We have a nickname for our ministry, the Campus Ministry of USA. Sometimes people ask me, what, are you, what is your name? I say, we're called the Destroyers. <laughs> we're here to destroy the works of the devil on this campus. And on this campus, they've exchanged the truth of God for lies. They've exchanged the truth of our Creator, Jesus Christ, for the lies of Charles Darwin and the evolutionists. Now, turn to Hebrews 